When you've only known your friends from the internet, meeting them in real life can sometimes be a little bit challenging. This week we're hanging out with Out of This Van and Benny Moore's Adventure More. They're all much in better shape than they are. Oh yeah, definitely. Our friends made it to the top of this incredibly difficult hike, but they left us behind. Find out why in today's f and Adventure. We're headed inside to go see if we got the data from the computers. Fingers crossed. All right, the good news is I was able to retrieve the data from the computers. We got the goods. They did a great job, we're very happy. Thank you guys so much. And yeah, now we, we can move on to our next destination. We left Palmer excited to meet up with some friends that we really only knew that well through the internet. The van life community online is super strong, so it was nice to forge these friendships actually in person in Alaska. How crazy is that? We spent a couple of days offline just enjoying each other's company and getting to know one another, and then we picked back up the cameras. All right, so all the dogs are getting some serious exercise right now, Except and this is what Paco is doing. Yeah, is that nice, buddy? Is that nice? Little feast yeah. time, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. So we have the signature F&A bread, and then we have the pickled salmon that Paul gave us in the parking lot at the Fred Myers. Yeah. So thanks so much. He's jingling the back. Penelope. Yeah, Penelope's <laughs> jingling away. <laughs> we got all the homies here. Everybody's Thanks hanging here. out. Yeah, of Hello, course. Uh, what's up? Welcome to Alaska. Oh. Somebody's away from Penelope. That's Penelope. Hi. You showing me your stick? So what did you guys think about the bread? It was amazing. delicious. Yeah. Salmon was delicious. I want it every day now. <laughs> yeah. How's the salmon? Amazing. Nice. Okay, so Jim invited us over to his house. It's about a mile down the road. We're gonna go check it out. We got everybody in the van. That's right. <laughs> we're going to we're going to meet up at the legend, Jim. He literally just came into our lives and told us all about his life stories and then invited him, uh, all of us back to his house, so. He said his wife wasn't gonna like it, but he was inviting us anyway. <laughs> and the other thing is we're not allowed to film anything at Jim's house. He was very specific about that because he doesn't want to invite any trouble. So we're gonna update you guys when we get back. Uh, but real quick, this is, this is the real questionable thing oh, we're yeah. about to do. We're about to go over this little tiny bridge. Oh, that they're repairing. <laughs> they're literally, literally repairing this bridge. I think it'll be fine. It is many hours later. <laughs> How yes. <was> many? <laughs> that uh, was something to remember. One forever. of the most incredible experiences we've had in Alaska, probably. <laughs> yeah. I like have no words. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what a problem. Organized. Organized. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they understood what we looked at here, yeah, they, so the amount of old cars, old things that uh, I, I don't want to go too deep, but it's been a magical experience and. We have to thank Jim and his family for allowing us to come here. Yeah. We appreciate you. And now we all know our weight because we hung on a moose hook. Yeah. And know how much we all weigh. So that's a good team bond, like building experience. Yeah. <laughs> team building. <laughs> Frankie is up over there helping with bridge construction. They are fixing the only bridge in and out of Jim's place today. And we're just having a little hangout. So it's going pretty well over there. We're, uh, we're putting in this bridge with the locals. Just figured I'd give a hand. The guy Jim took us over to his property and showed us a great time. So gotta get over there and keep drilling some stuff in. Come on. Frankie is never one to turn down an opportunity to help, so when bridge construction restarted the next day, he was right there helping move boards and drill them in. Many hands make light work, and we were happy to help after all of Jim's hospitality. Put down all the boards coming from all the way down at that end, all the way down on this side. You guys are almost done. Almost done for the day. A couple hours of work, finished up. Officially leaving.
leaving camp. We are heading to a hike that is going to be the hardest, most extreme hike that we have ever tried to accomplish. Oh, look at the glacier. The Manitouska Glacier area was absolutely beautiful and all of the folks that live in that community down there are spectacular people. It was really nice getting to know all of you. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for just your community aspect and how nice you were to us, allowing us to stay in that spot. Um, I'm happy that I got to help you guys with building the bridge, but now we're headed out. We are following our friends right now. We're following Adidas Van and Fenny Moore. They're both in front of us. We're about to go have a great time. And by great time, he means 4,000 feet of elevation in three miles. We just saw this trail and that is a fast vertical. <laughs> And you wonder why people who that hike could do pretty much anything. It's because stuff like this. This is like doing a Stairmaster for like 10 hours. The view's great from behind. I'm breathing pretty hard already. Me too. <laughs> this is probably the worst part so far. It's just like a massive puddle. The water's nice. Oh, Paco. Come on, buddy. Come here. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here. Mommy will get you. Okay, hang on. Oh, good, good boy. boy. Hey, look. Oh, gross. That's why I said I'll take him. You got him, babe? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, put the pop down. Okay. All right, buddy. You ready? Oh. Okay. okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Oh, yeah. I'm all wet and muddy now. Oh, sorry. Dog me. mom life. Oh. Hi, who's the happiest boy? You're half in, half out, huh? Oh, there's a giant bumblebee. I think I don't tell them, but they're all much in better shape than they are. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, th I think that we could hang with them. It's, we stop and do a lot of filming, but we're definitely out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Look how far they've gone already. You can't even see them anymore. They disappeared on us. <laughs> uh, we gotta make up some time now. Oh God. See, I think the reason why we think we're out of shape is because we always stop and then have to make up. So we're like running the rest yeah. of the way. What's your favorite part of the hike so far? This view, currently. <laughs> Downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Way back. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is the trail. It doesn't look like a trail, but it is the trail. I mean, I guess you think about how many people actually make this hike. It's probably not that many that make it all the way to the top. So that's why all the growth is probably here. But there's a stick there marking it. Oh, yeah. Seems legit. <laughs> so if you guys haven't already got your FNA hat, this hat has kept me in the shade and feeling good. So make sure you purchase yours. They're in the link in the description below. All right, we were wrong. That was not the trail. Brittany has forged ahead and found the actual trail. So we're gonna go try that out. She looks so majestic on the ridge line. <laughs> With the two dogs. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks more traily. How we feeling? Right we are chugging along. Feeling good. Feeling righteous right now. Oh. Feeling nice, baby. Dogs are taking a little water break. So are we after that climb? Levi's a non-conventional drinker. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shade here, so we should probably chill out. It just like pours right off of her. Right off of her. <laughs> you gotta like massage it in. Holy shit, we are lucky. I don't know, I just feel very fortunate to have this as, as our job. We appreciate you guys for allowing us to do this for you. That's the gunslinger point right there. You know, I'm still not 100% sure what this trail is called. Gunsight Mountain. We've been saying like gunslinger, like gun hole. Gunsight Mountain. At this point, the peak is so close. Just putting one foot in front of the other. We're gonna make it up. Here's to another summit. This one's 7,000 feet plus. So, feel pretty good about this one. 4,000 feet of vertical climb. We're at like the last, maybe 300 feet or so. We'll be at the top. You could see Denali from here. You could see Wrangell St. Elias. You could see all the glaciers on top of the mountains out here. This has to be the most incredible hike of my life. I'm very thankful. We still gotta make it to the top though. I wish the most incredible hikes felt most incredible. <laughs> oh, well. You know, like right now, this hike feels hard. <laughs> at least you're keeping it real, babe. Yeah. Paco's feeling it too. He's definitely slowed down a bit. This rock, I think, is tough for his feet. 
so it's uneven it kind of scares them a bit too i think more so than anything so, so i'll hold them we'll up make with it daddy. thank you yeah, dude. <sighs> i appreciate it man thank, thank you, you so much, much. we unloaded a little bit of the bag thank you buddy it's all good and now paco's falling asleep yeah he needs it yeah he's full like eyes closed yeah, snooze snoozing. right now snooze machine you okay buddy yeah he's fine i love you all right, so Alex and I did not make it to the top. We could have got a little tired. Paco got tired too, so we want him to rest. And putting him in a bag where, you, where it just gets even hotter is probably a bad decision. So he's perking up a little bit more too, um, but we still have a beautiful view from here, and our friends got to enjoy the view up there, got to get some photos of them, so that was well worth it. We didn't make it to the top, but we are starting to make our way down. Paco's in the bag. He looks very comfortable and very sleepy. This is not for everybody, this hike. This is definitely for experts. <laughs> it is a technical hard hike. Just ask Paco. How was it out there? Pretty unreal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that's brutal, babe. Yeah, just pull it up. <laughs> oh, no. Do a little pull up. <laughs> oh, that, yo, it it's kind of looks like a mullet, yeah. A mullet. <laughs> How's that? Who needs sunscreen when you got a mullet? Oh, yeah. That's like that's stylish. Cool. That's a new style, bro. I don't know. I see, I see the kids doing this. Yeah, yeah. definitely. New age shit right yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, this is like, um, this is like the little hippie kids, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, hipsters, that's what they're called, hipsters. Oh, wait, actually call it Your lingo is so good, buddy. Oh my god, it's so awful. Ooh, this is the best part of a hike. It's a black and blue on my toe right now. Oh no. Yeah, both of them are like that. Paco needs water, I'm gonna go hook him up. I definitely wiped out on the way back into a big mud puddle. Yeah, I cleaned my hands off, but... Pretty much. Pretty good. All scraped up on here. And then uh, to add insult to injury, Levi rolled all over me <laughs> while I was down in the mud. <laughs> Where are you on my back? Where are you? I don't mind. Like, I'm not that nice. Oh. <sighs> I am shot right now. Um, let's see what I feel like I'm gonna like just take a really nice nap. I don't know if we should go to Valdez first or if I should just sleep. You really minute. could like fall asleep right now. I'm I'm pretty tired. My shoulders are definitely sore from carrying Paco at the end there. All right, guys, it's that time. It's time to say goodbye to everybody. No. All right, let's hug it, hug it out. Oh, oh, never goodbye. You're so great. Oh, you see you later. We'll see you later. For sure. Yeah, man. Great to see you. Oh, yeah. Great to see you. You guys have a hot date with the honey lady, yeah, so know. you got to get out of here. Hopefully, I have cash. You show up, she's like, I hate you all. You got me out of bed for this. <laughs> So we decided to drive and stop before getting to Valdez. And we are in one of the most epic spots that we feel like we found yet. And I know we keep saying that, but they just keep getting better and better, it feels like. This one is magical. Alex, you gonna make some dinners? Yeah, I'm gonna make some food. We're both starving and sore and tired. We have to finish a vlog tonight still. So we're just like enjoying the view. Gonna kind of settle in for the night. And believe me, we need to settle in because that hike was not easy. No. That hike had to be the most grueling hike that we've ever done. So, yeah. We're going to need some rest <laughs> and some stretching. Good morning where we slept last night living in this van. You guys here on YouTube get the inside scoop. You see the best views of everything. You get the drone shots. But if you want to keep up daily, we do a good morning almost every day on TikTok of beautiful views like this. 
right now Frankie's just working on finishing up an edit for the vlog. I guess I'll start making breakfast. We're having a little bit of a worky morning. We do need to go into town. A shower would be really nice. Laundry would be really nice. We're getting kind of to the point where we need to uh, take care of some adult things after all that playing around in the mud. It's adulting time. <laughs> I don't even mind it though, honestly. I feel like I like doing stuff like that and just getting the space nice and clean and just feeling good about where we're at. So I think we're gonna uh, take a little time. I could tell you what, I am sore as heck. My foot, my right foot. <laughs> The arch is so sore. We're definitely gonna have to do some stretching and yoga today for sure. I am the master of bruises and cuts right now. My knee is all kind of jammed up. I have a giant bruise from four wheeling. I have this tiny little cut on my finger that stings like a heck anytime I put it in water. We're doing really good. Yeah. We're doing great. When you're living in a van down by the river and an Alaskan local offers to take you on an epic four wheeling backcountry trip, you say yes. He invited us to come out with him today on his four-wheeler. You need a break. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I just wanted to check out the side brush. What we didn't realize is Alaskan backcountry is no freaking joke. Hey. I just crashed the car for the third time. <laughs> My first time four-wheeling turned into a disaster real quick. Lunch is served. We're kind of like reheating leftovers from last night, but it looks really delicious, and I can't wait to dive in. Here you go, buddy. Big plate for you. Thank you, baby. I'm so hungry. Whoa, that's a huge plate. <laughs> all the food looks big because all of our plates are small. We can only fit the small dish plates in our cupboard, so that's all we have. Four small dish plates and four pretty big bowls. Very good. Paco doesn't seem like he wants to work. No, Paco wants to play. He's all about the play. Look. <laughs> wow. Oh. wow. Is this our new van life day in the life? Pretty much. Except this time we're not taking outdoor showers because we're wearing sweatshirts. It's quite cool. Well, you are. I'm not. You're wearing full pants. Yeah. That's pretty normal. You ready to show that full moon, baby? Oh, People yeah. loving your peach. <laughs> my peach, my lovely manly peach. Well, Franken, what happened? I've been eating my clam. <laughs> my moon shade clam. Oh my gosh. So this thing, one little gust of wind and the whole thing comes apart. So AKA you have to tie it down. There's two ropes. All right, I'm guessing I'm doing more moon fab work. Now we've got the tied off to the tires, so hopefully it can't blow away anymore. Let's see if it works. After we tied off the moonshade, it actually worked perfectly, stayed up all night and through a rainstorm, so we would definitely recommend it. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to a new day. It's a beautiful day. It's a little bit gray out. Hopefully the sun comes out, but we have some crazy news. Last night we were just hanging out and this guy drove by on his four wheel and Frank happened to go out at the same time and they got to chatting for like eight hours. <laughs> As per normal. Yeah. And then he invited us to come out with him today on his four wheeler. He's like, it's going to be rugged. It's going to be hard, uh, but it's beautiful and worth it. I've never rode a four wheeler before. Well, so we're going to have to teach you crash course. Yeah. He said the last time he loaned it out to a lady, it turned out that that four wheeler had no brakes. <laughs> So I'll test the brakes for you to make sure they're good. Yeah, we're gonna make sure I have brakes, but he said the lady with no brakes even made it to yeah. the place, so. Yeah. I think you got this. <laughs> well, we're gonna finish our breakfast and then we're gonna take you guys on an amazing Alaskan four-wheeling trip. What? You're gonna come too? Yeah, Paco's gonna come too. He's gonna sit in a bag. Paco, are you eating your food? Go eat your food, buddy. Hop on in, Paco. That's in neutral. Okay. No, that's in forward. That's in neutral. Okay. That's reverse. Neutral. Okay. Mm -hmm. Turn the key on. That button right there. The little black okay. button. Okay. Oh, you got it. Yeah. And that. You ready to go? Throttle. Throttle. Where's the brake? You need brake? <laughs> <laughs> Both of the hand levers. Are Our brakes, okay. Both of them. Yeah. And then only the throttle is that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. There's also a foot pedal over on this side for brakes too. Nice. Okay, cool. Your quickest brake, babe. Okay. Like a slam it on. Yeah, like if you really oh, gotta shit. get on your brake quick, that's the first one you wanna press. Okay. I just bought a new way. Spend a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shotty said she loved me, but it's fresh and never prove it. Simple as that. With family. Yeah. We're ready. Alaska. <laughs> Alaska. <laughs> All right, start her up, babe. Okay. I have the neutral. Yep. Turn the key. Turn the key. Hit that button. There you go. She's quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Paco's in the bag. We're ready to go for a ride. This is going to be super sick. Um, I feel like it, these are super easy to ride too. They're automatic, they're not manual, so that makes things a lot easier. Alex has the nimble, like, lighter one. I have the one that may have some issues, but you know what? I'm used to that. I'm ready to make this happen. I'm so excited for this freaking ride. He's already just ripping around. I'm like, can barely turn. We can be friends if you wanna. Alex, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I just wanted to check out the side brush. <laughs> Do it look good? Uh, yeah. Small cottonwood. Yeah, small cottonwood, eh? <laughs> I'm very interested in nature, and that's what I was doing. Okay, good, good. On purpose. You're okay. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Okay. Use your brakes. <laughs> I love you. All right, Alex is okay. We're back at it. Kevin has lived in Alaska for over 50 years, and when he first got here, this tiny little road that we're on was actually the only way to get to and from Anchorage. All right, we still got many miles to go. All right, start her up. Woo! Get her, baby. How you doing back there, Paco? You doing good? Good job, buddy. You're so good. You're such a good boy. We love you. This is four-wheel drive territory. Apparently, that was the easy part. <laughs> now we're going to yes. the difficult part. <laughs> and the cottonwood trees get larger. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah, at least the tree I ran into was very thin. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take like three guys and manhandle the four wheelers to keep them from going over. Oh my gotcha. god. Gotcha. I've been on the road, I've been doing shows. Now we ain't steak, remember sleeping on the floor. We're still in at the gas station when the time's cold. In the kitchen, hostel, trying to flip it out the stove. Rocking fake J's, praying that nobody knows. Watch them take my dog away, it was way too hard to stay composed. Fight to see the light of day, all this blood on my clothes. I was tired every day, green light, it's time to go. I don't wanna live life fast or die too young. Die too young. We made it to the lake. There's a little path through here. Hey, buddy. Hi, go. Go get your mama. Go get your mama. <laughs> Good boy. We made it to our first stop, which is the tip of Ruby Lake here. Super beautiful. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to ride up to the tundra. And Kevin has just given us the best experience that we can ever <laughs> imagine in Alaska right now. Yeah. As long as we get home with no broken bones. <laughs> that's, that's it. Don't worry, she got it. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. We could just laugh if you wanna. Late nights on the stars if you wanna. We could just keep This line. This line, where does it go to? No, no. On yours. The right here? The bleeder line for the tank. Does it just slide right in here? What? This line mm -hmm. popped out. Oh, it's just a vent. It's, all it's just a vent. That's what I said, like a bleeder, right? Ooh, so it just slides in the front here. Yeah, a little hole right there. All right, cool. Oh, you're doing good. Thank you. Yeah, kicking ass now. You know, I'm an expert. Hey, tell me what you want to do. It's like the story of my life. Best friend, but we rocking all the same things. Say you need me, but you really trying to change lanes. Well, I don't even care. In my life, I don't battle with no fear. Fighting dragons always been a real one. Hate you say Woo! Moose country up there, the little patches of grass. Yeah. That grass is probably head high. Woo! Looks little to us, but it's super tall. That's crazy. 
You got this, babe. Honestly, she's killing it now. She just had to get that first crash out of the way. Since then, ripping it up. How you feeling about it, Paco? All right, good. How you feeling, baby? I feel great. I'm, re I'm excited to go up this hill. This is like kind of a technical hill right here. So that's why Alex jumped off. She's gonna allow Kevin to get it up there as the smartest thing to do. So that's how we're trying to play it. <laughs> Kevin's the master. He's like, she already crashed it once. I'm not letting her do it twice. <laughs> So this, this right here, these cracks that have just ripped in it are from a rock at the bottom of the glacier. I don't want to go that one. Yeah, that one's probably pretty gnarly. This one's doable. Oh yeah? Yeah. All right, what do you think, Alex? Oh, I think I might have hit Paco in the head with a stick. <laughs> what do you think, Paco? Okay, cool. Paco's down, so we're down. Which door, baby? One, two, or three? Good job, babe. Woohoo, baby. This is awesome. All time. Push you on. Do not go that way. No, I won't. <laughs> Look at this crazy cliff. That is straight down. That's what you call a gorge. Huh? Which river is it? You could have a hundred moose over there looking at you and you never see it. Right. Right. From the top, from the top, that's where you can look all the way to Anchorage with binoculars and you actually watch jets taking off in the airport. Oh, crazy. In Anchorage. That's a long way. Yeah. Long. How's the sandwich? Delicious. A little lunch break? It's actually perfect because I'm feeling pretty hungry right now. Mm -hmm. Best mm -hmm. peanut butter and jelly you ever had? Yes, it is. <laughs> Paco How about him. you, huh? He's like, I love peanut butter and jelly. Oh, oh this mosquito. As we rode deeper into the Alaskan wilderness, the trail got even more treacherous. Huge boulders stood in our way, and even though Kevin said it was against the rules, he moved a couple of them out of the way for me. The more miles that we went into the forest, I just kept thinking, we've got to do all these miles back. The trail is getting wicked gnarly. There's huge boulders. It's gonna be tricky. And I'm over here trying to do it one hand with a dog in a bag. <laughs> Oops. Thanks to Kevin's expert knowledge of the trail and of the four wheelers, we were able to navigate even the most sketchy sections of the trail. This is gnarly and a hell of a lot of fun. So thank you, Kevin. We really appreciate it, man. You've been a rock star allowing us to come out here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we owe you one forever. He's swimming. Oh my God. 
Babe, you want to take my bag? Um. I could, what? I could try to pull you or push you. Uh, I could probably get close here. You might have to hook up that winch. Yeah, and hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Can you take my legs are probably going to get soaked, but that's all right. Kevin was joking earlier that there's a wench on this one that's the only one with a wench, and he has no idea if it works or not. So we're going to see if we can get him well, out of the river. Is I'm going to lock it in, and then I'll be able to reverse back out and pull him out. All so. right. Let's try it. Well, good thing this one had the wench on it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice, man. We got it, Kev. This is Alaska. Yeah, I mean, that's what these are meant for, right? The landscape has definitely changed. It's way more open. We're almost at the tundra. Some berries? Uh -huh. <laughs> Our foraging friend. What kind of berries are these? Blueberries. Little are blueberries? They? Let's see. Oh, yeah, you see them right here. Look at that. Look at this little guy. Wow. Oh, perfect. Let me scoop them. You want to eat it? Yeah. Here, Paco, you want to try the blueberry? Oh, <laughs> is that the good stuff? Ooh. Down the hatch? Some place you Yummy? Can I try one? Oh, they're sour. So cool. Down the hatch. Oh, that is delicious. Freshest blueberry you ever had? Oh yeah. And they don't cost $6.99 a pound? No, these ones are free 99 Well, <laughs> gas to get up here, I guess, right? It's a nice afternoon snack after going riding. <laughs> Look at Paco, Paco's going in on it. Look. Good boy. Paco is learning how to pick blueberries as well. It's pretty amazing that this is your backyard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just drive out of my driveway. Yeah. Too young, hundred miles per hour, my crash, cause good die young. But here I come. Alex, good job. I'm surprised you made it. I mean, of course I was gonna make it. <laughs> Kevin had to do a couple of the hard bits for me, but you know, that was probably because he was more worried about the machine than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use you for traction. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was a super fun ride. It was definitely very gnarly. I would say that we are all expert advanced four-wheelers <laughs> now. So that was pretty fun. Definitely a very unique experience. Thank you so much, Kevin, for taking us out today. Yeah, thank you, man. We really appreciate it. It was kind of fun coming up here. Right? <laughs> and we got the mountains back here. We have a lake right here, mountaintop lake. And Paco has been a trooper. He's been hanging out with us. He looks like he's ready to sleep right now. Yeah, he's going to get in the bag and just snooze the whole way the back. The whole way back, he's right? Had such a strenuous day. <laughs> This was my second crash of the day. Luckily, even though I'm under the machine, I didn't get too badly hurt. So we just kept on rolling because we had a lot of miles to cover to get home. And then I went for my third crash of the day. I'm okay. I know you're okay. I just crashed the car for the third time. <laughs> huh? That rock was scary, and when you fell off, you just missed his... Uh... The machine kept it from going one more roll. Right, Correct, yeah. 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 So it actually yeah, was perfect that it was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, I'm so, still in one piece. Yeah, you are. You're doing good. Uh, this is probably not your most nimble machine anymore. 
I bet she is. Yeah? <laughs> it's all about the rider, babe. Alex for the second time now. Luckily, she's okay. Um, we're just gonna keep moving ahead. She's confident and ready to go, so she's gonna keep motoring. You're in park. I gotta say, that was one for the books. Even though Alex crashed a couple times, I think we're all still feeling good. We definitely need some showers, so we hooked up the shower right here. I got a bucket of water from the river. I'm so tired. <laughs> I've never been more tired. <laughs> Exhausted. You should be tired. She freaking, you know, she wrecked three times, but like bounced straight back up and kept going. I'm proud of you, babe. You did so good. Thanks. So that was Alex's first time ever, first time ever on a, a four wheeler. And she went through some crazy terrain in Alaska. Like that was a true Alaskan experience when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to anything. That was a true lasting experience. So we're happy that we met Kevin. We had that opportunity. We're going to meet up with him tomorrow and make some dinner for him because that's, I mean, if we could trade something, at least that, right? Woo. As a thank you <laughs> to Kevin. Ooh, I'm so far away. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kevin. So Alex cooked some dinner tonight. In exchange for destroying his four-wheeler, I made him a meal. <laughs> <laughs> Should I show him your dance? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're gonna enjoy our night. We'll see you in the morning. A full 24 hours later, two showers, two dinners, <laughs> and a good old day of hanging out. And we're finally leaving Kevin's. Yeah. Kevin, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. It was so much fun hanging out with you, and we can't wait till the next time we see you again. But for now, on and forward. We've been in Alaska for about a month now, and we've truly enjoyed all of the food, the wonderful outdoor experiences, and the people that make this great state so amazing. That was very refreshing. <laughs> but the truth is, to get into the real crazy shit in Alaska, like buying bananas, you're gonna have to shell out a couple of bucks. So how expensive is it really to travel through Alaska? We'll tell you in today's FNA vlog. We are on route to Valdez right now, and we've heard that everything from here on out is gonna be pretty expensive. We've kind of lucked out so far. When you're in the big cities, Alaska isn't crazy different in terms of groceries and gas, but when you start to get out to places like this, the prices start to climb. Let's go inside and check out the prices in the store. I'm sure they're not gonna be cheap. Normally bananas are like 89 cents, 99 cents at the most, $1.69. We're running low on flour, but I'm like, do I want to spend $10 for a bag? The question is how low and do we need it till we get back to like Fairbanks or mainland? area. I guess we're just gonna eat through what we have. <laughs> Everything's very expensive. Looks like no Oreos this week. Luckily we only needed a couple of staples but it was still 50 bucks. We have the fan running right now. I'm sorry about the noise, it's but- It's so hot. It's over 85 degrees right now here in Alaska where we are. And for us, that is extremely hot. We're used to like 70s at the highest right for now. For some reason too, the Alaskan sun is like- It's brutal. It's strong. It is brutal. And I lived in Florida. Luckily for us, we didn't need to get everything because if we would have had to get everything, that would have been a very expensive shop. We got basically a bag full of groceries for 50 bucks. It's not bad, but I can't imagine having to like buy all of your fresh produce there because it would get insane. All right, time to get over to Valdez. I'm excited to see the glaciers. I want to go kayaking to the glaciers in Valdez. Luckily, we don't have to get gas right now. Yesterday, we topped off for $3.90 a gallon here. It's over four dollars. Mm -hmm. 
The drive to Valdez is just littered with beautiful views. You just saw the drone shots and now check out this waterfall. This one right here is called Bridal Veil Falls. So check this out. One thing that hasn't been expensive in Alaska is filling up water. Even though everything here on iOverlander says that it's basically $5 for water, seems like everybody's really sweet. If you just ask, hey, how much is it to fill up water? I have a small van. The answer from this particular woman right here was $0. Good morning guys, Alex is inside finishing up the video and then I'll get in there and I'll do the audio and stuff. And then we are gonna take you into town, we're gonna go check out some kayak prices and decide exactly what we want to do. It's all about the money though. We have to figure out what is gonna be right for us when it comes to value as well as what we could afford. And we could afford free camping just like this. So we love to hike for a couple different reasons. One, we love to be in nature. Two, it's great exercise. And three, it's free. And Paco loves it too. Don't do it. We have done a couple of tours while we've been in Alaska and they've all been amazing experiences, but you really have to seek out the ones that are less costly. Yeah, especially for us, we don't have that high dollar mark that we could hit to go on all these different adventures. And some of the excursions are just like epic once in a lifetime things that are like five grand to go see grizzly bears. But we're just hoping to see them in the wild huh. on our hike. Buggle, buggle! This looks like the perfect swimming hole. You going in for a swim? I don't know. I'm wow, it looks so perfect. We are not at all far away from the lake. So we're gonna go check that out first and then decide which one we wanna swim in. Ah, can't swim in here. Lunch was great, but a beautiful view. Now it's time to head back down to the car. Don't you mean go skinny dipping? Oh yeah, yeah. We could go skinny dipping first, then head back down to the car. But as you can see, Frank's already put his sweatshirt on because the breeze is starting to pick up and it's not a hot one. And once that sun gets just a bit lower, it's gonna get cool out pretty quick. So by the time we get back to the swimming hole, we'll see, uh, see how we're feeling. <laughs> so we gotta be real careful with Paco because that right there is a bald eagle. And it looked pretty hungry. He has little talons up. So now Paco's in between. He's gonna be hiking with us. Not without us. Paco was ahead head. of us a little bit oh, and he circled Paco and we were like, oh hell no. He just landed right Get out of here. One of the first things that we taught him was to walk in between of us. We did it on leash for a really long time and now he does it off leash too, which is amazing. Especially when he might get eaten and plucked right out from the sky. Three. Oh, he went all the way in. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. buddy. He's like, hell no. Psych. Just messing with you. There's so many bugs though now that I'm like really contemplating going in. Do it. Yeah. Woo! 
How is it? Whew. Freezing cold? A little bit, yeah. You have to go, they'll be gone. They'll be gone. They'll be gone. Jump in. Oh, ow, ow. Jump! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, I'm done. That was very refreshing. We got out and got attacked. We were like trying to get dressed, like dancing around, swatting them. It was so hilarious. Yeah. But that was super fun. Very refreshing on this hot, hot day. So I feel much better that I went in the And water. now we can both say we've been skinny dipping in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> Our free excursion was an amazing way to spend the afternoon. And there's so many things to do here in Alaska that cost a few bucks. We've heard kayaking is the thing to do here in Valdez. We're gonna go get some pricing for a tour. And then pick the best one for us. So we priced out all the tours. The cheapest one we saw was $79 per person. So times two plus taxes and also tipping your guide because you should always tip your guide. So that's a little bit out of our price range. We're gonna see if we can do something DIY. If you really wanna blow your budget real quick in Alaska, this is how you do it. You eat out at all the yummy spots. All the local spots have great food, but man, does your wallet get empty quick. Through some internet sleuthing, we found the perfect solution to our excursion problem. With Valdez Stay and Play, we were able to not only go kayaking, but also e-biking for the price of one tour. That's two days of adventure for the price of one. Alex, you ready? I am so ready. You guys are gonna die when you see this lake. The Valdez Glacier is at the very back and all these chunks here have fallen off it over the years and are just like chilling in the lake. You definitely want to make sure you put your life jacket on because the water here is freezing cold. Literally, there are icebergs in it, so you have to be very careful. This will save your life here because when you hit that water, if you go in, you're going to panic. Oh my God, I feel like I'm tipping already. What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Come on, keep oh, I didn't realize we still needed to scooch. If you start to see the iceberg start to bubble around it, that means that that iceberg is going to go whoop and do a full turn. So you gotta be really careful uh, when you're coming up next to them. If you see the bubble, stop paddling and get away from it. The other thing to note is that this lake is over 600 feet deep. So yeah. do not fall in. Yeah. I haven't actually touched the water yet. A guy that we met today at our campsite said if he oh. could it is ice cold. Woo. That is way colder than the lake that we were in the other day. Oh my god. We're even up on the uh, that last hike that we just did. Yeah, our little skinny dip the other day. Mm. Yeah, look, that's all iceberg. So we gotta go backwards. Okay. Uh, uh, give us a push off, babe. Nice. Well, the so, other thing too is you don't wanna push off the side iceberg, because as you'll see, it just keeps going so there's no you got to be like really delicate about it yeah well thank you for getting us off the iceberg babe i appreciate it you're welcome Thanks you're about to all. back us into one though okay i'm trying to turn it down <laughs> There's no disguise in how I feel whenever I'm with you. We full burged it, guys. We full burg. Full burg over here. We are, we were trying to like scooch in between these two because there is a sweet ice cave over there. It's just so sketchy. Icebergs to the right of us. Icebergs to the left. Here I am, stuck in the middle Where with you. you. Stay and play Valdez advised us not to stand on any of the bergs because they're not 
steady. Well, just think about it like this. It's literally a bobbing, floating piece of ice. And it's so, 650 feet to the bottom. Yeah, you don't want to mess around. We're messing around right now. Yeah. And uh, do we go forward or do we go back? Well, we could try to go forward, but it's probably a bad idea. Ready? Ready? Go! 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 Oh, Are shoot. We going in Are we? <laughs> or are we more stuck now? <laughs> Oh my god. This is probably what you should not do. Yeah, don't do as we say. Not as we do. <laughs> I'm out. Where how are you? I'm almost out. Oh my god. We're definitely tippy. We're definitely All right, here you go. <gasps> I think we're free! We made it. We made water. it! Oh my god, okay, let's go check out this waterfall. That took about half of our time though. <laughs> <laughs> we are now only have an hour left. <laughs> it was worth it! I've waited till the moment's right To look into those starry eyes And say the words that I'm thinking all the time I'm pulling us out, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared to go deep. I thought I was gonna break it. It was a knee slapper, that one. I don't trust that vagina bird. <laughs> that vagina bird was sketchy as fuck. So let's start again. These two berg hunters are going know. deep into the double berg. It's a double berg waterfall. Wow, that's definitely a dead end. Back, back, back it up. At any moment, the birds could just slide down. You just don't, don't want one of these bergs to calf on you. That would not be fun. Oh, it just fucking fell. Oh, it just fell, literally. That huge splash that you heard behind us was the spot that we just left from falling in. That's insane. Oh my, and we went in twice. We went in once for YouTube and once for TikTok. And then as we were backing out for TikTok, it freaking bloom. If that would have hit the side of the, this boat, we would have went in. That's crazy. Babe. Yeah, that was wild. You guys got the shot because we risked it, but uh, I don't think we'll be risking it much more since we've seen that. <laughs> so that was an amazing adventure. I would definitely recommend if you come out to Alaska and you are in Valdez that you come out here and you do this tour. It's self-guided. You take yourself wherever you want to go. The icebergs out here are amazing. You cannot go wrong with this type of an adventure. Now we've got to go spend some money. <laughs> we need to fill up our tank of gas. We're going to look on the apps to see which of the gas stations around here have the least expensive price and head there. And then we're going to find a new camp spot for the night. There's only so many gas stations in town. So the one that I think is going to be the cheapest is the one before you get into the main town. 398 over here and everything else in town was like 407. Over four, yeah. So. 407? Yeah, 407. Damn. So this is where we're grabbing fuel. Yeah, so we're gonna fill the tank because we got a big drive to get out of here tomorrow probably. We've also got a really fun activity tomorrow morning. So we'll show you guys that in a bit. But after we spend this money on gas, we're gonna cook at home to save some money because we just been shelling it out all day. We're going for our rides. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you Are you okay? About that in there. You're okay, stay. Okay. All right, here we go. We're getting ready for a ride. We're back at Valdez Stay and Play. We are all geared up. We're going out on the e-bikes. We got a huge map of everywhere that we could go to here in Valdez. So we're going to take you guys on an adventure. I'm in charge of the camera because Alex needs two hands. <laughs> I need both hands. Why are you pedaling? Because that's what you do on a bike. I don't know. Man. You don't have to pedal. Why am I pedaling? It's a bike. Look, look at me. I'm going backwards. You're all throttle. I'm all throttle. I prefer light power. <laughs> Valdez is super unique in that it was actually built three miles away from where it currently stands. After a big earthquake, it was deemed they couldn't keep it there, but it gave them a unique opportunity to start from scratch. You did so good running. He's the strongest, best boy. 15 miles an hour, this guy can run. Come at me. Throw him in. 
The city of Valdez is also home to so much natural beauty. Thanks to our map from Valdez Stay and Play, we were able to find tons of off the beaten path attractions. And of course, return to the potato for a delicious lunch along the route. Then we headed to the fish hatchery, which is another amazing free thing that you can do in Valdez. Watching and listening to nature in action right in front of you. Just having the difficulties getting started, but it'll be all good. I'm a little bit worried about the bridge, okay? <laughs> okay. You got it, babe, go. Okay. Okay, okay. Hi, Mama. Mama. Now we're gonna go do showers. We actually did showers the other day at the harbor, because that's what's on iOverlander. Those showers sucked. Turns out there is a new harbor like a minute away with beautiful facilities beautiful. that I wish somebody had told us about. We updated iOverlander to be like, take your tokens, come over here, because this is way better. Oh yeah. So we are going to take some showers before we head off to our next destination, Denali. Crazy. Yeah. My last like two showers have been freezing cold, so I'm so glad it's hot. So that was a $4 unlimited, not really, but super hot, really long shower. Five, $5. Well, okay. It was a $5 shower. And me, Paco, and Alex all got a shower. Yeah, so definitely worth the coin on that one. Alex, how did it feel to have a hot shower finally? Finally! Oh my God, I was so angry when I came out of the other shower. I almost cried. Like I was literally like, why does this keep happening to me? Well, you could cry of joy now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, overall, Alaska is a little bit more pricey, but yep. it's totally worth it. Yeah, it is. It's worth the experience. This is like, it might be a once in a lifetime experience for you. It might even be a once in a lifetime experience for us. We don't know. When you think of driving in Alaska, do you think of this or this? Today, we're taking you on one of the most remote highways in Alaska. I don't know if I'm going to make it to Prudhoe Bay. Oh my God. Click subscribe and let's see if the roads are as bad as they say. We are officially on our way to Denali National Park and what better way to get there than the Denali Highway. Woo! I can't wait to go through here. I feel like this is one of the more remote highways that you could go on and hopefully we get to see a lot of wildlife. The Denali Highway is 134 miles long and it's mostly gravel road. Depending on the time of the year, there may be more potholes, but who knows? Fingers crossed, you have a lot of places redoing their roads. So you'll have these dirt road stretches where they have a flag person standing there, blocking off one side of traffic. And they have a pilot car that will tell all these cars to come down. The pilot car will pull over and then it will let us go and we'll, we'll go back the other way. Two times that we've done it, we've pretty much had perfect timing and haven't had to wait long. You never know how many miles the other cars are coming away from. So when you get to one of these spots, you could be stopped here for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But every time that we pull up, we're like, oh, there's the pilot car coming this way. So now we just have to wait for these cars to drive by and then it'll be our turn. Winnie Winnie has probably been here for a while. It's like they, they even shut off their, their rig because they have no brake lights on right now. Or they're just out of brake lights. Oh no, that'd be bad. <laughs> Oh, this is exactly why they have a tow vehicle. This is a huge ass dip in the center of the road with a giant work truck next to us. How about you, Paco? You doing the driving? Yeah, he's always driving. You doing the driving? Can you show him how you drive? Put your hands up. Oh, good boy. 
We're assuming that we're not gonna have really any service along the ride, so we've downloaded a couple of audiobooks. First up is Kevin Smith's Tough Shit, just something to make us laugh. My American dream has always been simple, and it's one I encourage you to adopt as your own. Hmm. Figure out what you love to do, then figure out how to get paid to do it. We've already beat the odds. Just from our dad's nut to our mom's egg, the fact that we've made it here is kind of incredible. So cherish it, enjoy it, do your best. That's all you can do. Here's the line on the other side. It was probably like eight miles of road. They're in for the ride of a lifetime. It's a good one, that's for sure. We are officially on the Denali Highway. The first couple of miles are paved, so we're gonna enjoy that before we drop into God knows what. Beyond this point, not recommended, it says. Did well. it say that? Yep. It's clear that this highway isn't super well maintained anymore. If you could see that roadside stop over there it used to be a very big busy place when the Denali Highway was actually active and the only way to get across. But obviously it hasn't been that way in a long time. It's also a very thin road already. So like there's two lanes and they're tight. Into the unknown. How's the pavement treating you? It's uh, pretty fun. It's like, it's uneven and it goes up and down quite a bit. So you get a lot of bouncing. You gotta be really careful on roads like this. Make sure to take it easy and uh, be ready for movement to happen. You know, keep a good grip on the wheel. What's your speed? Right now I'm doing about 45 to almost 50, which is probably a little fast, but uh, I feel pretty confident in my abilities. As we're coming through the Denali Highway getting to the pass, you guys can see it's super gloom out here. There is like zero visibility off the road. If you ask me, it makes some, for some like really picturesque, like really cool vibe. You're vibing? Yeah, I love vibes like this. It's like kind of like you decompress when it, when it looks like this outside. It's like, yeah. it's like almost like it's raining out and you get to like kind of hang inside in the warmth and whatnot. Okay. It feels the same for this. All right, you feeling cozy over there? Yeah, I feel cozy. We're planning on sleeping along the highway somewhere. Hopefully tomorrow morning we wake up and it's like a nice beautiful day. Who knows? I have to apologize for my camera work because it's really hard. I can say is there's not a lot of potholes so far. So, whoa. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Whoa! I'm, I'm excited to see when it turns to, uh, I'm excited to see when it turns to dirt. Sorry if you're getting seasick watching this. It's actually pretty funny. I feel like I'm riding a horse at a rodeo right now going down this road. I mean, wa watch, you'll, you'll see. I keep one elbow up, and then this is what happens. It bucks you around a bit. Wait for it, here it comes. Whoa! Whoa! Pavement has just ended. We are now officially on the gravel road. Well, so far it actually feels more flat than the paved road. We're doing 45 right now and just cruising, no problem. They're actually even doing road work and maintenance on this part of the road. They just built a new bridge back there. When the Denali Highway opened in 1957, it was the first and only road access to Denali National Park. In 1971, however, the Parks Highway was constructed right from Anchorage to Denali, making the Denali Highway kind of obsolete. But as you can see, the views are absolutely stunning and totally worth the 134-mile bumpy, sketchy road. Since we are at the peak of the Denali Park Highway, we're gonna go and put a sticker on the sign that everybody else has to. We don't normally do things like this, but seems like it's already been done a couple times, so we're not like the only ones. I'll allow it. It is raining, so we'll see how well it sticks. Made it to 4,086 feet. McLaren Summit, FNA Van Life approved. <laughs> if you've been here and you put a sticker up there, let us know in the comments below. And you were right, it's definitely raining and we shouldn't fly the drone. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. I just wanted to, them to see. 
see how displeased I am with this road. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to Prudhoe Bay. No, I don't think we are. Oh my god. There's some smooth spots today. They're few and far between. Only room for one spot down there, and he's in it. All right, we gotta find something else. Yeah. You want to go back that way? Oh, look, there's another road right here we could check. There are tons of places to park along the Denali Highway. There's literally like pull off after pull off after pull off. We're just trying to find a really pretty one. That one was absolutely beautiful, to be honest with you. It's just, he's kind of parked in the only spot and then it's a one, one lane. So it's not like we could have like pulled over and shared the area with him. Right. I was wondering how the heck he was going to get out of there. Back up. Ugh. Nice and slow. It's not worth it, I don't think. You want to drive through the creek? I want to, but I also don't want to get stuck with nobody out here to pull us and out. And we don't have four by four. I'll tell you what, if Matt and Amber were here, I would go across that creek. Oh my god. Because I know that they could winch us out. Let me, I'm going to go take a look at it. I'm not interested in creek crossing business. What about you? You interested in creek crossing? You want to go check it out? Okay, let's go. We could pull into right there and have a creek view. Or if you want to keep driving, we go to the other side of the bridge. Yeah. Come on, Pop. Up and in. I just bought a new way. This is breathtaking out here. Shawty said she loved me, but it's fresh enough to prove it. I never tell her, but I put it. Oh, man. Olive is looking fresh. The van is super dirty, but we found an amazing spot to camp for the night. This wasn't our first choice of spots, but it's still a great spot. And it looks like we have a little spot we could walk down to the river. Paco's excited, how about you, Alex? I'm pretty excited too. This is absolutely stunning. There are tons of blueberries here. It's definitely berry picking season here in Alaska. We ran into some people on the road that were just like filling buckets up. Now it's our turn. I just bought a new way. This guy loves blueberries. You in there? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Paco was more excited about the blueberries than we were. And we like him a lot. We gave him a couple, and then he's like, I'm doing this myself. You're not feeding me yeah, fast enough. He's in the ones up there now, too. Once we give it to him, too, he knows that it's okay, that he could eat it. So then he finds it for himself and eats it. Ah, ah. no. <laughs> Something died here, for sure. You don't want to pick the blueberries from that spot, I'll tell you that much. Time for the most dangerous part of driving down any bumpy road, opening your upper cabinets. Oh. Nice. Haha, -ha, this definitely fell oh, off, oh, but hinge. how about this guy? Wow, everything like nestled itself. It fell, but it nestled. Check out Not the, as bad as I thought. Uh, I've already uh, opened this one. Oh, did you? Ta -da. This is the worst one. Look at us go. Hell yeah. I'm going to make some black bean bolognese and Frank is going to work on the edit for a little bit. Yeah. I'm How's ready. it look? It looks really good. I'm super excited because I am starving. <laughs> All right. So Paco, my buddy, I'm sorry, but you got to get dude. up. dude. I need the chair. Little dude. Oh, look at the little dude. We might have one too many throw pillows. Yeah, they're in the wrong area. They should be up there. <laughs> look, Paco doesn't want to get up. He should be. All right. Bon appetit, baby. Thank you. Kisses to the chef. Okay. All I want to do is make the best of my whole day. Thank the Lord up above. Get the cream on the side. Make you have to know it. We have to leave super early this morning because I actually have a phone call at 10 a.m. And we got to do the rest of the drive, which is probably another quarter of the Denali Highway. And then we got to find service. So hopefully the first town out of the highway has service. If not, we're going to have to drive all the way to Tuckeetna before 10 a.m. This was a really sweet spot to sleep though. It was super quiet all night. We slept really peacefully, but now it's just... Even even with the animal bones right next to us, we slept real well. Yeah, did you show and, them the animal bones? And the half-built, uh, yeah. Grave? And the half-built grave. There was some animal bones and a grave. 
We survived. And that's all that matters. I guess we'll see about road conditions now that the road's wet. Yeah, I was actually gonna ask the question, what do you think? We have like another hour of this or is it gonna be quick? What I do you think? Know. Like there, how much more dirt road is left? Uh, oh, it'll come up at a while. A while? Yeah. All right. I'm wondering if it's like the other side where it becomes a regular road. It should again. at some point, yeah. but I don't know how long till that point. Mm. So now not only are the roads questionable, they're also wet. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Luckily for us, the weather turned and the sun came out, allowing us a beautiful view of all the surrounding area. Before we came on this highway, people warned us that we needed a spare tire because people get flats all the time, and also to expect that our windshield would probably get cracked along the way. Luckily, we didn't get stuck behind any big trucks that throw the rocks at you. And if you do, just make sure that you give yourself a big amount of space between them. If a truck is coming towards you, make sure to pull as far to the right as you possibly can to avoid any rocks getting kicked up by their great big tires. On the Denali Highway, the paved roads and the gravel roads were really good at times and really bad at times, so you just have to stay alert and take the drive as it comes. We are back on the pavement. Hopefully it's not as bad as the pavement on the other side. Wow, it's silent. Yeah, like the van quieted down so much. 45 minutes? 45 minutes from the spot we were parked at, yeah. So we still gotta get out to town to get some service. Today we are exploring Talkeetna, the launching pad for all of our Denali adventures. And I am so excited to go to Denali, but first, this town is so freaking cute. There are tons of shops and restaurants, so we're gonna eat our way and shop our way through town and take you guys along for the adventure. <laughs> Let's do this. So these, these products are all natural. They're all uh, been handmade by my wife for the last 14 years. Mm -hmm. And those are Devil's Club salves in the back, and those are like a natural pain reliever. The ones in the front are amazing moisturizers. And yeah, Devil's Club root can be used for joint pain, inflammation, uh, bug bites, burns, cuts. Oh, I'm excited cool. to check out your new Yeah, yeah thank you so home. much. Definitely uh, tell my daughter about it. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It was nice to meet yeah, you. Nice sticker, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for uh, the advice on the mountains out in Oregon, too, Absolutely. as well. Check I'm looking out. forward to, to And while you're doing that, check out Bagby Hot Springs. That's the best place Ooh. in all of Oregon. So we got a Devil's Claw tincture, a lip balm, because I can't keep losing mine. And we also got a dozen eggs that look so fresh and delicious. All natural, baby. Yeah, we've kind of been off eggs for a little while because the stuff that you get in the store isn't necessarily the most high quality. Yep. So these look absolutely amazing. I'm excited about them, honestly. Yeah, and we're about to go camping for three days, so this will be good food while there. I got a very fruity breakfast. I got an oat cup with tons of fruit and a berry smoothie. the historical society's interpretive trail for a woman named Belle who is instrumental to founding this area and just at the end here we should maybe be able to see Denali. Denali straight ahead. Yeah. Well, but unfortunately is just barely covered by the clouds so right here in the center here is probably where Denali is um, and then you have another mountain range right here. Is that the sleeping lady I think? I don't know. I think that might be the sleeping lady. So, no luck seeing Denali yet. 
Hopefully, we get to see her before we leave. We have officially left Talkeetna and we are heading back to Denali. If I'd looked at a map before we started this excursion, maybe we wouldn't have headed to Talkeetna because it's actually like an hour or two out of the way. But I'm glad we did. It was such a cute little town and we met so many nice people while we were there. Now we are heading into the park. We still have not seen Denali from Denali. We saw it from Gunsight Mountain, but we're still on the hunt. This is day three of trying to see Denali. She peeked out just a little bit yesterday, but we missed our window. The sun came out. It's now rainy again, but you never know. It could come out. She could just give us a little bit of a presence and that would be perfect. We're gonna take you into the park and show you everything to do around the visitor center. And then we're heading to our campground. We are headed in to Denali National Park. Woo! I'm so excited right now. How about you, babe? You excited? Yeah, I'm like not on the same level as Frank apparently, but yeah. First stop is the visitor center. The visitor center is closed. The restaurant is closed. Closed. Because they're following all social distancing. But the store is open. And packed. <laughs> it's always sunny where you are from. I know. It's no Speed limit must be 35 miles per hour. Your headlights must be on. If you see a pedestrian or bicyclist or road worker, you want to reduce your speed to 10 miles per hour so a lot of dust or mud doesn't kick up on them. If you don't see anyone at Savage River Checkpoint, don't. I'd recommend bringing your own wood because it is $10 per bundle. It's a lot of money for wood. They say it's an hour and a half drive back to the tech campground. There are so many rules associated with it's... this campground. He just went through like a whole list of stuff. So we're gonna let you in on the deets as we continue our time here in Denali. My impression so far of Denali is actually a little bit negative and I don't like to be negative and you know that. The people at the front desk just seem to be not happy and everything feels very ruly and, and straight in your face like, like not a good time. Realistically, the site to sign up to come here is not easy to like navigate and actually figure out. The process to call and get a bus pass is not easy and difficult. They sell out super fast. So, so far my experience has been tainted a little bit. Hopefully once we get to the campground, it's gonna change our opinion of the whole thing and we're gonna yep. have a beautiful time here in Denali. But I agree, it's a little bit of a buzzkill so far. Yeah. It looks like I gotta stop here with Paco. Alex is gonna keep going on and go see the dogs. The Denali dog sled team has been in effect for over a hundred years. Back before there were cars, dog sleds was the only way to get around in the Alaskan winters. They carry on this tradition as a throwback to the history, but I gotta be honest, it was kinda sad to see all the pups just tied up on this summer day waiting to do something. Is it a grizzly yeah. or? Yeah, grizzly yeah. yeah actually cool. out there a grizzly killed another grizzly oh. uh, just a couple, like a week ago. Okay. And uh, then that like set off the unease out there. It's like a mother without a cub. There's a big male that did the killing that's mm. like just hanging around being all weird. Did you guys freaking hear that? The grizzlies are killing grizzlies. They're competing for power right now. They're all over the campground. There's one in Teclanico where we're going right now. So we have to be real careful. And that's the reason why you have to have your dog on a leash at all times. This is gonna be exciting. I feel like Brian made me more excited about the experience than any other yes. person that we've met so far. So the level of not feeling great about it to feeling really good has just went up a couple ticks. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> right, Paco? Sure. Right, Paco? High five. Right, high kiss. <laughs> On the way to the campground, 
we're allowed to stop wherever we want. So if we decide that there's a nice area to stop and go for a little hike, you're welcome to do that. Um, I don't know if we'll be doing that today. Wherever the green cones are, are actually really great places to park and that's where they would recommend for you to park. And Paco is allowed to be on the main road but not go off into the trails or backcountry stuff. It's our first official wildlife sighting. Some birds. We're waiting for the big guys. Last in the radio. We got both windows down and no one around. Don't have to take it slow. We made it to our spot. We circled both of the loops here just to kind of pick our favorite spot. We asked Brian down at the hut what his favorite spot would be, and he said by the river. So that's what we picked. Is you this walk, the river? This is, this is right out our side door, so we just get to walk out, and I'm pretty sure the river is down a little further. This is just like a little creek. Wow, look at it rushing by. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Oh, technically, I don't think he's supposed to be back here. Bears frequently in this area. Be alert. We don't have our bear spray. We got, yeah, we should probably bring that. There's literally, they were just talking about the grizzly bears being over here. So, yeah, we have to make sure that we're prepared. We're already breaking the rules. Yeah, so we got to bring Paco back. And then he's not going to get enough exercise for the next four days. No, that's the unfortunate part about being in national parks is a lot of the time we can't bring Paco anywhere. Like so. we're going to have to walk those two campground loops like 400 times yeah. for him to be like, OK. And he can't be off his leash either. So he can't like really run. I have to then run with him, I guess. Yeah. Which means I'll get some cardio exercise. Good for you. Thanks. How about you? Yeah. So back to the van to <laughs> drop Paco off. Huh? I got us a nice little fire going, and it looks like Alex has just finished cooking. Oh, hi there. I've just finished dinner. Nice timing, babe. <laughs> Thanks I for made, the knock. Um, I made Brussels sprouts. They're hidden under there with some rice and some sausages. Looks great, baby. Yeah, traditional campfire food. You yes. Know. We could have cooked it on the fire if we wanted. Yeah, but then you have to like super clean it because there's so many bears in the area. They're like, if you're going to cook on there, it better be spotless. Yeah, and we're not the spotless type. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is actually such a beautiful area. I'm glad that we picked this spot. And it's the I'm one closest. Over here a little bit. Yep. It's the one closest to the river. So there will be people probably coming through our campground to ask to go to the river, which is perfectly fine because we would like to share the areas we're in. Actually, I'm going to tell them, hell no, I paid for 39. Oh, squirrel. Is that a squirrel or a chipmunk? I think that's a squirrel. Whatever it is, it's cute. Good morning, friends. It is bus day. We are taking these two tickets. Today is the only day that we have a confirmed seat on the 1040 bus, so we're gonna take it. But dogs are not allowed on the bus, so we just spent the last hour walking Paco around the campground, getting some energy out, because we're probably gonna be gone for a couple of hours. Hey, buddy, it's okay. We're gonna be going for a nice long ride, okay? You're gonna be here for a little while by yourself. Come on, I'll just be right here. You won't even notice me. What are you doing, silly boy? What are you doing? So we have a full bag packed with food and water for the whole day. There's nowhere to buy food on this bus and there's no, well, they said there's a drinking water fountain at the visitor center. It's going to be a long day on the bus, but apparently it's a very beautiful ride. Oh no, our bus. Just kidding. We thought that was the bus that we were supposed to get on. That was actually the 1020 that run a little bit late. Something held them up back that way. Uh, maybe it was wildlife. I have no idea. Two people who were standby did get on. Yeah. So they were the last two seats on the bus. There is some work going on here though. So uh, that could be holding them up as well. But I'm excited to get on this bus. I think there's going to be a ton of wildlife. We have a beautiful bluebird day. I think we're going to be able to see Denali today, which yeah. is the whole hope. That's one of the official tour buses. Those are more like $240 per person, which is a lot. Too much money for us. Yeah, so even the $120 to ride this bus seems aggressive. Yes. So hopefully it's worth it. We got a tip from Drifter Journey that on the way into the Elson Visitor Center, we want to sit on the driver's side closer to the front. I don't know if we'll even have an option based on that bus's busyness. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, so we'll if, see. If anybody knows where else to sit, 
before they get to Talkeetna, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> They had a ranger talking about the caribou and their fur and what the fur did for the native people here. It actually is the way that they stayed warm in the winter time. They had to hunt because there was no possible chance you could have edible plants throughout a whole season here, or throughout the whole year, I should say, not just season. So they had to hunt to be able to eat their food, but they were very thankful after their catch. So I think it's something that we should do as people is be more thankful for the food that we're consuming. We're at our second stop. This is a pass that's got a beautiful view. It's kind of windy and a little bit cold up here and we only have like three minutes to do anything. So I'll just run up the stairs. The buses sort of like get crunched up together and then you have so many people in one spot. I don't want to say it ruins it, but it doesn't make it as fun as if you were like the only two out here, you know? The good news is we've spotted Denali. There you go, there it is. Boom. So hard to see though. We gotta get Oprah rich so we could just like charter a helicopter to take us through here on a private tour. I think Oprah that would be the way to do it. Oprah Ridge. The mountains look like a big old butt crack. Those ones? That's what they're 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 yeah. A butt crack mountain? Yeah, those two summits are two miles apart. And the clouds covering up the glacier coming down. There's These lovely ladies shared some pizza with us. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So it's not the biggest. Yeah, he's coming right at us. Right through the creek. Decided to take the lower route. We're gonna go down towards the creek area down here. Also, that glacier right there is ascending at 200 feet a day right now. So it means it's pushing up towards the road. There was that one point that it almost came over the whole entire road. Pretty wild. I got you a present. I got a present for you. You want me a present? Oh, a blueberry. Oh yeah, look. A fresh blueberry. That's a sour blueberry. <laughs> so we did a teeny tiny little hike down to just get a better view of the area. 
and now we're heading back. The buses don't really give you that much time in each location. You can technically wait around for the next bus to come, um, but I heard someone talking that it's like an hour wait for the next bus. With Paco waiting back in the van, we don't really want to miss our ride. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut our stay here short and go see Paco because we miss our little guy. Good morning, everybody. It's time for breakfast. I'm excited. I got a fire going for Alex and I, which I got to stoke a little bit. Breakfast was delicious, and now we're going to head for a walk. We have one more day at this campsite. After yesterday's bus excursion, I had a terrible migraine. And so today, I'm still not feeling 100%. And to give everybody a heads up with dogs, we're gonna go walk along the road because dogs are allowed, well, cars are allowed. So anywhere cars could be, dogs could be. So we'll be able to take this little guy with us on a nice little hike. That way he gets exercises as well. Because yesterday he didn't get as much as we did. No, and even when we got back, we took him for a little walk and then basically went to bed at like 8 p.m. <laughs> so. Paco's turn. I'll give you guys a little tour of the campground. This is it. That's it. <laughs> and then these are the facilities. <coughs> Luxurious. This is the only water on site. Do you have a great big water fill at the very beginning of the entrance to Denali? So mm -hmm. we filled up our tanks before we came in and we'll probably fill up on the way out. Yeah just Definitely. to fill up. Um, but at the campground, there's just that one little spigot where you could fill like buckets of water. They don't want you filling your rig here. They also don't want you washing your dishes in that exact spot. You'd bring like a bin with you, wash all your dishes inside that bin and then dump the water behind the rest area. There's like a little gray water sink. So there's another bathroom over there. Each of the camp spots has a picnic table and a fire pit and that's it. Yeah, that's it. So there's no electricity and there's no direct water as well. And also to give you guys a heads up, it's gray and cloudy today. Um, no rain, which is great, but it's pretty much like lower 50s, it's cool. mid 50s yeah. right now. So it's nice and cool. Um, good walking weather. And I'm so glad yesterday was such the beautiful, clear day to go yeah. for that bus ride because we got to see Denali. We got to see so much of the canyon. It was really mm -hmm. beautiful. Not that it wouldn't be beautiful on a gloomy day, but it's definitely better. Hi. Hey, Honestly, I think the best way to get around Denali is by bicycle. Oh, yeah. There's so many people who bring their bikes in because you can't have a motorized vehicle on any of the roads past a certain point. Does that count for like uh, electric bikes? Well. Because that would be the real way to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of hills and some sketchy driving places, so it would definitely be handy to have an electric bike. But if you could bring your bike into the park, you can get on and off the buses with your bike as well. Mm -hmm. So you could literally ride, Stand get by. to the bottom of a pass, load your bike up, have the bus take you to the top of the pass and then ride down. Another note on our bus passes, they do work for today as well. You can have them for standby for the whole rest of your trip. Um, we just, after yesterday, that was enough bus for us. And we wouldn't be allowed to get on this time around because we have Paco with us. Yeah, well, today is more important to hang out with Paco and for me to get feeling 100%. Yeah. And that's not gonna happen on the bus. No. That's how you know you love your dog when you make out with them. <laughs> it's not the most scenic of walks, but dogs are not allowed in the backcountry, so we have to stick to the main road. We know that backcountry is like the thing to do here in Denali, but we love Paco and we just want to hang out with him. And I mean, you still get a beautiful view of the mountains and rivers. 
and all the nice things. And there's a really good shot that you might see wildlife while walking on this road. Uh-huh. We're both so unplugged from our phones, we didn't even bring them on the walk. We forgot about them. Yeah, we were just like, mm, don't need that, and left the house. After a nice long walk and another night at our campsite, it was time to hit the road. We saw on iOverlander that there was showers at Riley Creek that were actually pretty affordable. So we've circled the Riley Creek campground, which is just at the entrance of Denali, and can't find them. It seems like that the shower would be at the Mercantile, and it seems as if the Mercantile is close to one o'clock. And the bathroom itself is closed there due to probably COVID this year. So pretty much out of luck when it comes to showers here. We're gonna have to find them somewhere else. Yeah. We also confirmed that you don't have to do anything to check out. We wanted to make sure that we weren't supposed to sign in somewhere or whatever, let them know that we were leaving. The guys at the Mercantile said that we were all good. So now we're gonna head towards Healy and find showers. So what was your overall impression of Denali? I thought it was an absolutely beautiful place. It's something that I would definitely take a bike into next time because I think that's one way to see it really, really well is with on a bicycle. Um, but overall, it was a great experience. I wasn't crazy about the bus. Let's just go that far. Kind of like mixed bag about it. It was kind of expensive and you know, yes, it's a national park and yes, it's beautiful, but it was like, it was okay. It was okay, it was an okay time. It wasn't the best time that we've ever had in the van. That's for sure. Yeah. So let's go see if we can find the best time we've ever had in the van in Fairbanks. Warning, this video contains bad jokes and silly innuendos made by four longtime friends. We took out all the cuss words we possibly could, but sorry if we miss them. Thank you for sticking with us, and if this is the kind of fun you like to have, smash the like button. So poke away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't poke too>. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder my elbows are on fire. Frank 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 you got the hardest nipples in the world. <laughs> oh, is that the most comfy bed ever? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! That's a good one. There may have been some vodka involved. Let's get into today's FNA vlog. We got lost, but now we're finding our friends. Who the heck is this? Oh. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> skip, skip! Wow! Oh, who died? Skippy, come over here! Oh. <laughs> who is it, Skip? Are you <laughs> oh, cool. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you! <laughs> because last time I'm so excited! He's so excited! <laughs> If you're new to the channel, Matt and Amber are our friends from Florida who let us build our new van in their driveway. We are so excited to see them here in Alaska. Guys, this is your first van life fire. Sorry I that it's, uh, there's no rocks around it. I know. can't wait for you to sit here and poke it though. Whoa. I gotta see this obsessive compulsive I'm actually poking. not going to poke <laughs> it because I'm trying to get myself away from the addiction. Yeah. <laughs> so poke away. Yeah. <laughs> I want to poke too. <laughs> we got to pass the poking around. <laughs> hey, uh, why did, uh, did, did Alaska <laughs> poke away? Oh my God, guys. We're at a highway overpass. There's cars that keep driving by to look at the view and we're like, nope, sorry, view's taken. <laughs> sorry, keep, we're having a fun. Keep on moving. 15 minutes ago. <laughs> sorry. If you'd like to join, feel free. What's the plan, buddy? The plan is uh, Chena Hot Springs. Let's go to Chena, baby! We're debating about whether we're gonna stop on the way there and camp, or if we're gonna like get all the way there. We can always just get all the way there. Let's just go with the flow, baby. Go with the flow? Go with the flow. <laughs> Fox truck <drive> mic out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's roll out then. All right, let's go! As we ride out. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I just literally turned and have no idea. <laughs> like, how about you guys leave? Did you GPS me? All right. Oh, we're one hour and 11 minutes away. Ooh, that's my lucky number. One eleven. Let's roll out. Right, yeah. Ow! Yeah. Yo. 
I think too small. I got big dreams. You just starting them way ahead at the end scenes. Hey guys, I just wanted to say, even though it's a rainy, cloudy, gray day, I'm really grateful that we get the opportunity to travel with you guys from Florida and now in Alaska. Wild. Love you guys. Thank you. Make it our heart melt. We are so happy to be here. It was a long time coming and I think that this day sort of uh, sums up the whole good <laughs> So I think um, it's a beautiful Alaska day because you guys bring <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love them. I didn't realize it was just a great big tent. I had a feeling okay. they have to keep it insulated somehow. Why isn't it made of ice? It is made of ice. Look at Look it. Look at it. <laughs> it's big blocks of ice. It's big blue blocks of ice. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. It's going to be too cold. Don't freeze your hand instantly. It's a little moldy. Ooh, I see some hot spring steam in. Uh, a lot of steam over there, over yeah. yonder. Yonder? Yonder. We gotta head over yonder to check out look, the hot look, babe, look how That's close the fire cute. was. Holy shit. Oh, we literally wrapped around this place. Holy shimbos. So where down the street is, the fires were super close and they were evacuating the whole area, but the Chena Hot Springs was like, hey, no, we're staying. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, All right. This, was, this should be hot. Oh yeah, that's hot. Yeah? yeah warm. Is it hot? Warm or, or hot? hot? <laughs> yeah, it's warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. That's pretty warm. That's probably like freedom. Maybe something to with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yes. You almost found out how hot it really was. That's probably like. <laughs> oh, you can feel how warm. Just like get in front of it, you feel how warm it is. Well, you can stand on this and feel it. Yeah. You can tell oh, nice. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. oh, and then they merge. This is the river tour by Amber. <laughs> Are we? Yeah, we could enjoy I'm, it for two days. I was gonna soak for two days. I'll be Let's honest. go for two. Oh, double soak. Yeah, yeah, double soak. And guess what? Ooh, baby showers. Oh, oh. oh. I haven't done that in a week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, it's settled. I think we all look really scared. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Are oh, you guys out. ready to go into the hot springs? Right. I'm ready to get out of this cold. Yeah, go. yeah, go, 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 go. Oh, oh that feels so good. Oh. Oh. I was freezing cold and now it's nice and warm. <laughs> How you guys doing? It's nice. It's better than that uh, hallway right there. I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. I think it's because my. Oh, it's sand. <laughs> I think my elbow. <laughs> There's like gravel in here. Like, All yeah. of a sudden, yeah. the road ended. You got this. There we go. I got a phone in my. Oh, it burned. Yo, <laughs> what burned? <laughs> Same thing happened to me. Like, really? Yeah, for real. Me too. You all are freaking weird. It got, well, it's fine when it's you get so in. It's so hot. Wait, it's Ding. really hot right here. Oh, though. yeah. Right here, it's, it's almost too hot. Yeah. Well, hey, come this way. No, I'm good. Wait, Alex, to, you're going to fall off Alex, a cliff soon. That's okay. I'm okay with falling off a cliff. Just walk is this way. Oh, this is so. Come this, this come this way. I see you're not going to Oh, that's hot right there. It comes into the spring. Uh oh. You'll feel it. Oh. Wow, there's a, there's like, a, I feel like a lobster. Like I'm gonna be cooked in five. Yeah, burn my body. Holy fucking hot. <laughs> no wonder my elbows are on fire. Okay, we gotta experience all the different corners because obviously some are hotter than others. <laughs> Someone peed in that corner. <laughs> Oh, my God.
<laughs> less love, less love under the waterfall. Well, what a cool experience. Yo, look how deep this is too. It's literally to my neck. You're just short. Oh, yeah, you're, hey. it, you're, you're just little. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at Matt, look at me. <laughs> the truth is that Frank and I are both four feet tall. <laughs> We're talking about, uh, you know, how much important it is to drink the water when you're in here, you start to go crazy. <laughs> I'm already crazy. <laughs> I'm I'm like feel lightheaded, so. Mm -hmm. Is that water cool? It's cooler than this. It's, right. It definitely felt a little bit more refreshing. You ready to get shot by the cannon? Yeah, always. I know Alex Jump in there and take a shot. I think you are first. Yeah, Frank, I think you go first. Frank, Frank first. Frank first. first. Frank first. Frank first. Frank first. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Listen, you get the shots to the face this time because I suck starting the heater earlier. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> that looks really enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's the smell, bro. Ooh, that is the smell. That is the smell. Ew, y'all gonna stink now. Get in there. You yeah, you're next, that. girl. Right. The Chena Hot Springs has something for all your six senses. We enjoyed the sights, smells, sounds, sensations, and sexual innuendos that all of this rushing water had to offer. There are showers in the locker room, but if you're skeeved out by wet places where lots of people have been, don't enjoy them. What do you think, Matt? It's a little stingy. <laughs> We're going into the ice museum. It's happening. It's How are we feeling about it? <laughs> do I what? We're gonna go chill. We're, We're gonna, gonna go, go chill. chill. <laughs> Chilling in the Igloo Museum. <laughs> we only have two rules. They're good rules. No licking the ice. Ew. And no touching the ice. We're good. <laughs> it's the man. Yes. That's how they keep the ice icy. This is like a million sizes bigger. The coats are even cold. I know. Where's my oh my God. Oh, no, 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 no. He looks like an egghead. Okay, no. I feel like an egghead. I thought you said this coat was special for me. Yeah, you lied. <laughs> Is there even a zipper? No, they don't put a zipper because people it's don't dangerous. know how to use them. Okay, good thing I have Velcro. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right, first I got there, ready to go. Know. Should she got the hardest nipples in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Heather and Steve Bryce are our world champion ice carvers. These are their stations where they carve ice hand, ice carved all these sculptures in here. Not by hand, literally, but by these machineries that you see here. We could get married up here. Okay. Let's get married. Let's sit on the little fur stool. Are you thirsty? Yes. <laughs> you look also, cold. I am. You guys don't have to <laughs> I like how you went up between us. Yeah, you, you all are driving, so. Yeah, that's true. We should have two guys. The cup is deceivingly large. Holy gamoli, he likes you. Is that just straight vodka? Oh my. Alaskan water. Alaskan water. Ah. Moose juice. Wow. I'm gonna feel like shit later. <laughs> oh, you drink the glass better with that. Thank you. And just drink away, guys. Thank you, sir. Do I, wait, it's a martini, so I gotta get my pinky up, right? Pinky's up. No problem. Yeah, you guys can't walk around. And you get to keep your glasses. So we have a tradition here. You guys go outside. Yeah, we get fucking strong. <laughs> I'm about, about to get real warm. <laughs> so you get alcohol and vandalism for free. Hell yeah. <laughs> so we get to break these? Yeah. It's kind of like sour. <laughs> it's very cold. Yeah. In the club, in the club, in the club. Are these supposed to like... <gasps> Shut the fuck up. Wow! Dude, you're a magician. <laughs> oh, 
bees are on? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, this is the bed. This is creepy. Can you lay it in there? Oh. I got you first. You did. <laughs> <laughs> we had this. <laughs> oh, is that the most comfy bed ever? Oh, God, this. Yeah. <laughs> It's good for your spine a little longer. Yeah, I think it is actually, because you know you're supposed to lay on the flat. Right? I think sex would be painful. <laughs> Yeah, 45 <laughs> seconds usually. 45 seconds, that's pretty that's good. Bad. But you gotta have 17,000. <laughs> I'm making a wish and smashing an ice cup. <laughs> you know? Opa! I think you should do one. Okay, a wish for Frank. Frankie Nunez. Frankie Nunez. <laughs> All right. Uh... Whoa! <laughs> yeah. It's so, so much more green out here than it was in there. I think it's also. No, 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 mine too. Hers is too. Okay, Amber's getting ready to make her wish. Make it a good one. Guys, ready? <laughs> ready? ready? I don't know if you ready. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Safe! <laughs> Dun da da da! I dropped my sunglasses and I stepped <gasps> on them. <laughs> so Did you wish beach. for new sunglasses? I should have. <laughs> I think we do shit, man. You okay? Let me. <laughs> yeah, you still look cool as fuck. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, we're good. Okay, I gotta finish my drink. And now I get to make a wish. Are we gonna throw it up this time, yeah, or are we just gonna I'll, slam I'll it? I'll throw it up. Okay. Okay. The intrepid Franken has returned. I made it. I made it. If back. you you guys have been wondering where he's been at, I've been right? laying in the van. Yeah. Just so relaxing. we have to drink his martini for him. So I think uh, Amber and Alex, or or Amber, just drank it. And uh, how you feeling, Amber? So fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> it's my head on the street. Yeah, your head is perfect, straight. Honestly, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Okay, thank you. So now we're gonna head into the restaurant here. Dollar. <laughs> right now we are headed to Kristen's house. Uh, it's a lady that we actually met at Sheena Hot Springs. She's gonna gift us with some jam, some blueberry jam, straight from nature. This is what living on the road is all about, meeting locals, doing local things. All these blueberries were picked in her backyard. So couldn't say no to that. Even though this road is a disaster. <laughs> oh my god. We slid. I mean, it is called Adventure Road. Copy that, Baker Baker Pro Master 3, 5, 2, 3. Yum. Bye, Aunt Kristen. <laughs> Is Aunt Kristen right there? Say goodbye, Aunt Kristen. Yes. If we're back, we're stopping by. <laughs> Aunt Kristen hooked us up with some blueberry jam that we put on a pancake from this morning. She also hooked us up with a whole jar of her fresh-made blueberry raspberry juice. Oh my which gosh. is going to be so delicious. It's heavier on the blueberry side. <laughs> which is a good thing because that makes it sweeter. We're so grateful. Thank you so much. We love meeting people on the road and exploring and experiencing what their day to day life is like. Mm -hmm. Now we are heading north. So we're headed to the circle. The circle is about 150 miles away. So we fueled up before we headed that way. We had about 200 miles. I think we could have made it, but it's always good to fuel up before you're going to go on a long journey like this. So, next stop, 
circle. Yeah, the GPS is saying turn back around. You're gonna get fucking lost out here. All right, we're lost already. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Up to an excellent start for this adventure. We are about to go more off-grid than we've ever been in our entire time in Alaska. This is the Alaskan Highway made famous by shows like Ice Road Truckers. After a relaxing soak at Chena Hot Springs with our friends Matt and Amber from Adaptive Humanity, it was time to put our tiny home on wheels to the ultimate test on the Dalton Highway. We make it halfway, we make it all the way, you tell me. Or will our dreams go up in smoke? We're at mile nine, we gotta get to miling a hundred and change. If you're ready for another f &A adventure, click that like button right now. It's our national Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's a Coca-Cola commercial of you. So we're headed to the circle. The circle is about 150 miles away. So we fueled up before we headed that way. We had about 200 miles. I think we could have made it, but it's always good to fuel up. We also fueled up on a little bit of caffeination. Frankie grabbed a Red Bull. I decided to make myself a matcha in the van. Oh, Let's go get low. <laughs> If you could get lost with all that tech gear you have in there, I would be absolutely amazed. Actually, the first day that it, the sun's shining and it's the it's six o'clock at night already. Yeah. So it, it, we haven't had sun in like four days. I know. This is actually we need to soak it in while we can. It feels really good to have sun. Yeah. I think we got some water coming in from like the, one of the antennas and the lights up there. So I'm gonna have to hop up on the roof one of these days and uh, tighten down everything because. It's been raining non-stop, and obviously, that's an issue. Shit. So far, the road is generally pretty good, but when you hit, like, the frost heave, your whole van like hits it. And basically for us, like we have to stay below 60 if we don't want to like rub or bottom out on anything. So the key is about 55 is generally like a good speed for us so far. There are some massive potholes on this road. So when you are driving, make sure that you are very aware of what's in front of you or pay attention to the guy driving in front of you because they're most likely going to be trying to dodge those. They don't want to blow a tire out. That's actually how we blew a tire out in Jamaica. Really big potholes. Yeah. This is actually supposed to be the easy part of the road. Don't fall in the river. We made it to our camp spot for the night. We still haven't made it to the Dalton Highway. I think we're probably about 10 miles away from the actual Dalton Highway that takes you to the Arctic Circle. Sign. But I think that's enough driving for today. How do I look behind there? How much room do I got? I think I got like a, I think I got another couple feet. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I like that. I could deal with that. We're hiding from the mosquitoes. They're yes. bad. They're bad. <laughs> what do you guys make for dinner tonight? Uh, food. I <laughs> funked up some leftover pineapple rice. Nice. nice. And I funked up something that is now really funky. There is no name for what I have cooked. Looks like a uh, masterpiece. Jambalaya. Oh yeah, jambalaya. We'll go with that. I'll tell you what. It tastes good though. Frankie approved. Oh, hey, uh, we're just having a little morning coffee sesh at the uh, Adaptive Humanity van. <laughs> Cheers. Good morning, um, Mr. Paco. Mr. Paco, do you even love us anymore? He's like, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> don't come at me with that camera. I don't have my face on yet. <laughs> you can't see me. Paco. Oh, you pop back here. <laughs> you went back. Uh, he just pawed my time. Hi, Bubby. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember this, but when we, when we were building out the van at their house, Paco used to wake up in the morning just to go find Matt. So he would run through the kitchen and then he would find the little living room and he would go lay on Matt's lap. He wouldn't even go pee. 
<laughs> he loves him. How about Skip Skip? Just love at first sight. <laughs> skip Skip is just happy to be around everybody. <laughs> He's the good seal. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to drive the rest of the way to the Arctic Circle today. Yeah, we got uh, Hell yeah. We have 126 miles. Wow. That's not bad at all. I thought it was a pretty easy drive yesterday. What are you drinking there, bro? My morning orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Tropical Florida best, you know. Mm -hmm. Take the boy out of Florida, but you can't take the Florida out of the boy. Get the skip. Get him. Go get him. Oh my God. How am I ever gonna film this? We're back on the road. We have about 120 something miles to get to the Arctic Circle sign. This is as far north as we're gonna drive, but there is definitely a lot more road after that. You can go all the way to Prudhoe Bay, which Adaptive Humanity are gonna do, so make sure you follow their channel. But based on the roads right now, we're not even on the bad highway yet. I know, it's kinda wild to think. Yeah, so this is gonna be an interesting drive. That smooth sailing road we just showed you has disappeared into this potholed, filled dirt pack. I am going to be so seasick by the end of this drive. I'm just over here dodging holes. Dodging holes. If you could dodge a wrench, you could dodge a hole. Living good is two miles. All right. But as the sign says, there is literally nothing to do there. Just be good women out there doing nothing. <laughs> We are officially on the Dalton Highway. There were a couple of really interesting signs that I did not get a shot of. One said, extreme industrial traffic, proceed with caution. So do not get behind the big trucks. They will throw tons of rocks at you. That's how you end up with a broken windshield. Ouch. The second sign said that the speed limit is 50 miles an hour for the next 400 miles. To me, that means there is no more signage. They're done with signs. They're like, we're... Are you guys getting any kind of music or radio? You know, we have not even tried, but we can, uh, we've just been listening to each other's sweet breath for the last <laughs> half hour. The thing, we got books on tape. Yeah. There is nothing happening on the radio. We are in the sticks. you guys think the Brand Pro Master could make it all the way down this road? I mean, listen to it. It's pretty gnarly. And this is like a good section. So, will we make it? Will we make it halfway? Will we make it all the way? You tell me. I just saw the mile marker. We're at mile nine. We gotta get to mile like 100 and change. My goodness. I'm thinking every mile we drive that way is a mile we gotta drive back. It's interesting to see the pipeline along the road. It kind of comes in and out of view as you're going. And it's a little bit of an eyesore. They could have at least like covered it in moss and helped it blend in. And I do too. This is a uh, this is a rough road. This is probably the roughest road we've been on in all of Alaska, and we've been down some pretty tough ones. We just had our first pee break at the side of the road. There's lots of pull-offs along the way, so if you ever need to stop, just go ahead and do it. Just make sure you get off the road completely because you do have truck drivers going back and forth, and they'll run they'll run right into you. They don't give a fuck. All relieved. I think I'm gonna grab uh, some chips because I'm feeling like a little bit nauseous, so I think so that'll help. And we're just gonna kind of keep on keeping on. 214 miles till empty. So I'm hoping we see a gas station in the next 100 miles. Let's get her done, let's see that circle. Oh, you can hear that. It's all coming out of the tires. You can just hear the mud hitting the van. I 
we could have got a more beautiful day for this drive. Welcome to the Yukon River. I think it will just shake itself loose. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it rock, literally. Um, a card inside. Oh. <gasps> that's from that's from one of the lights up there being open and us getting all that rain. Water got in here, so this this has water in here right now. Oh my uh, god. Can you get a paper towel so sure. we can dry it out? Uh -huh. Oh man. Dude. It's all on the plastic though, luckily. Uh, yeah. hey kids, what kind of vandalism are you up to today? Sticker putting. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting I'm putting three stickers on here. Ooh. We we made it out this far. It's getting three. I'm gonna go a little guy right here. Little low. Little low 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 low. That's a good oh, spot. Yeah. That guy's faded. Ooh. Gives Ooh. Paco. We're gives, cool. gives Paco a background. Nice. Yeah. Gotta get that swag. How much is the gas? Expensive, that's how much it is. <laughs> five twenty nine nine for think, diesel. Man? I need to get wow. And let it five forty nine nine. Yikes. Tell Frank that's like Canada prices. <laughs> <laughs> they make it sound so cheap though. They're like, oh, it's ninety two cents a liter. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, how did I just get one hundred twenty bucks? <laughs> right. Looking good. The bee is loving it. The bee's like, ooh, it's so colorful. Um, Big bikes and I cannot lie. You are but a captain now. Wanna go watch them with it? to get you a good price. No credit card here. So, you give them your credit card inside. You come out here, you fill up. You take a picture of the pump of how much you filled, and then you go inside and pay with the credit card, and then you're allowed to leave. I don't know, man. How much do you think? We gotta do a little over a quarter tank. I'm gonna say uh, four, or five, four to five gallons. Thirty bucks. I'm gonna take the high forty-five. What do you want, Parko? How can I help you? You wanna go for a walk? Nine gallons cost fifty dollars and fifty cents. All right, I get that little doggy. I'm ready. Is that your friend? Cookie. Is that your friend? Hi. Oh, he almost hit me in the face. Little buddies. All right, y'all. From the map on the wall inside, it doesn't look like we actually have that much further to go. So we should be there in maybe like an hour. Check out this gift shop on the left. Just like a wooden shack. It looks like. Oh. Oh my. We should have bought the stickers from there. They look like they need the money a bit more. Right. Hand on my head, chest on my chest. The road's gotten kind of dusty. I don't know if it's because there's a big truck in front of us now, so the truck is kicking up dust, and Matt and Amber are kicking up dust, and then we're just like... Behind it all. It does seem that the road has gotten better. But, oh no, oh, I just missed him. Whoa, almost killed a squirrel with a nut in his mouth. Oh, I missed him though. Whew, that was scary. I don't want to kill a little squirrel. But yeah, update, I'm glad I look forward. Two, the road is getting a little bit better. But that doesn't mean it's not gonna get dramatically worse at some point in time. It is a very beautiful drive. Like, it is super scenic. Uh, and we also stopped in a little tiny town, fueled up gas, which was amazing. The truckers are carrying so much weight that going up the hills, they can only do like 15 miles an hour. So you wind up getting stuck behind those rigs. The thing is when they go downhill, they get right back up to 50. So you just gotta cruise and relax and wait for them. We're not gonna pass them. If you work out here, you might, but I wouldn't recommend it because uh, those are some big rigs and a lot of things could go wrong if you try to. Also, when you get real close to them, they start kicking up rocks and you don't want a cracked windshield, you want to keep your distance. Um, when they're coming by on the, on the other side, going the opposite way, you want to get over to your right as much as possible. So that way when they do push out rocks, you don't hit, they don't hit your windshield. Hopefully they just hit like the side of the truck. Mm -hmm.
I feel like we're just, I'm like waiting for that one giant pothole that just throws us out. Oh, stop. Don't say that. Oh my god. That's, I mean, it could happen. Matt's up to, ahead just like This one has to slow down for it because this one's huge. Oh, 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 oh. That's it, see? If we didn't slow down, we would have we got thrown out. Oh. Wow. Yeah, look, Ma, we made it, we made it. We made it, we made it. We made it. Bureau of Land Management, here we come. Arctic, 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 here we come. Paco looking out the window, here we go. Adaptive in front of us, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Oh, shit. We made it! We made it! Hello! Go see your Uncle Matt. Look at that! We made it! Yo, half abs, half abs, half abs, all about half abs. Half abs, half abs. Another group high five. Half abs. Another group high five. Everybody! So this whole area around the Arctic Circle is BLM that's actually set up with campgrounds. So there's a couple of places where you can tent camp, there's pit toilets, and we're gonna go follow this sign that says half mile down the road camping. Hopefully find somewhere to park tonight. I'm just happy we made it all the way out here because, oh wow, look at this little dip. Right? This is a huge dip. We literally have unlimited spots to choose from because there's no one else here. I wonder if that's pretty common. We have procured what may or may not be enough firewood for one evening. Do you guys think this is enough? Are we gonna run out? No, I think we're good. I think we have plenty of firewood. <laughs> Man. <laughs> the exit. No, bro, we can't be twins like that. <laughs> They're getting their They're, man on. They're feeling manly. Yeah. Nobody really no manly, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Smell manly? Yeah. Mm. Nobody's ever been as manly as these guys yeah. foraging for wood. Kick it! Ooh! Whoa. Whoa. Color you impressed. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> nomadic family and from making it all the way across the United States yeah. to the Arctic Circle. From Hell Tampa, yeah. Florida to the Arctic Circle. <laughs> and it's just the beginning. Yes. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Love y'all. <laughs> Matt talked Frank into a project. What is happening up there? It was an important hey, that, uh, You said they didn't even need an axe. I said <laughs> that's because men are hunters. Women are gatherers. <laughs> and look at them coming in hot. I showed you how much wood we got. Because that thing has been going since like four o'clock. Yeah. Four o'clock in the afternoon. There's... And this thing is still burning and it's burning hot. But these girls right now came back with about half the amount of wood we did and they didn't even bring an ax. <laughs> I'm asking their secret. So I can tell you. What is your secret? Um, we brought an axe with us and gained this much wood. Oh, we just use our muscles. Yeah, natural. Pure strength, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excuse me. Yep, we got a uh, fire to start. <laughs> oh! 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 That's how you get wood. <laughs> yeah. oh. Freak me out. <laughs> 
<laughs> I freaked you out. Yeah, I heard just your feet, and I'm like, oh my god, there's a bear coming to bite me. <laughs> Definitely it's a bear. Fine. Definitely this a bear. This is how I go. How are you guys feeling? We're feeling good. I've got the fire yeah. poking stick. Yeah. It's on fire. It's on fire. Is that is that uh, the Olympic torch? Yeah, right. It yes, starts it's off in Alaska. Mm. <laughs> We're just waiting for the aurora borealis. Uh. It's like well after midnight, and there's still light in the sky. Yeah. So. It looks so We're beautiful though. Her. All right, guys. Good night. We tried. We did our best. Sometimes you just have to know when to call it. You can't even see you at all right now. Yeah, I mean, it looks dark on the GoPro, but in reality, it's still freaking dusk. And the clouds are rolling in. Say goodbye, Paco. Oh, you little lucky. Goodbye, Paco. Paco's gonna miss you guys so much. Yeah, I don't want you. <laughs> Paco is choosing to travel with adaptive humanity moving yep. forward. You know, Liz, he <laughs> likes their luxury seats inside. Right, he's like, I'm over you guys, your chairs suck. I'm going with them. Oh, Thanks to steal Skip's bed. <laughs> Skip, we're gonna miss you too, buddy. We're gonna miss you too. Love you, Skip. We'll Skip. see you soon. Love you, buddy. Where you guys going? We're going to Dead Horse, aka Pluto Bay. Nice. And They're going for the extreme adventure. It does. Oh, look, look, look. Oh. Pop it back in. Oh. He really doesn't want to come with us. He doesn't want you guys to leave, I think. Aww. Now, he doesn't want to go either. <laughs> he wants to stay with us. Tiger, are you staying with them? Bop, bop. That's okay, you can stay with us. <laughs> we got so much room for you. Okay. Bye. Bye. We'll see you soon. Let's go, buddy. He's growled at me. He's like, oh, no. oh, 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 no. oh, 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 no. oh, 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 and then there's Skip. I am ready to go. Bye, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, buddy. Oh, you guys are so good. I'm so sad that they're leaving right now, even though I have a big smile on my face, because I know that we'll see them again real, real soon. Well, at least maybe a month or two from now. <laughs> but it's, you know, bittersweet. Love you guys. Off to the Bye. Arctic. Woo! It's a beautiful adventure, um, adventuring with you guys to the circle. To the Arctic to Circle! It. And Ooh. beyond! We made it! <laughs> Bye! Bye! Bye. 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 First up, get as far away from the Arctic Circle as quickly as possible. We said goodbye to Matt and Amber. They are heading further north, but we have to go south. Because we gotta catch a boat to the mainland. We are taking Tote back to the lower 48. There is so much to get done before then. We only have four days to get there too. We're gonna make it, and we're gonna take you guys along for the journey to let you know what you need to do to ship your van back with Tote. But this road, is not where you want to start. No. No rocks to the windshield. Seems like I'm going a little bit slower on the way out, too. Yeah? Yeah, like, probably about like 45 to almost 50 when I was waiting for more like 55 to 60. Is that because we were trying to keep up with Matt? Probably, yeah. It's funny, up ahead you can see like plumes of smoke, and that's the only indication that there's other cars on the road. It's just the dust that they're that's kicking right up. There. Yeah. I feel like, well Frank was just saying, the paved road is almost worse than the dirt road. Like it's smooth in spots, but like it has the frost seems way worse. Right, and then you're like, the oh. And then you get like this unrealistic expectation is you could go like a bit faster. Oh. No, you, you probably need to slow down. <laughs> yeah, we're making our way very slowly, one bump at a time. 
Good morning. We drove like 10 hours yesterday. From the Arctic Circle all the way down to basically Denali. No fucking fool me. Little fast. <laughs> I think like this time of the year in Alaska, it just seems to be raining like crazy. Maybe it's because it's coming into like fall and like the, the low pressure's coming in. Meteorologist, right? Paco doesn't mind. I don't, don't quote me on that. I don't know how true that actually is. We've had like some beautiful sunshiny days, but there's also been a lot of like gloom Definitely fest warm. rain. Yeah. I feel like it's like the Pacific, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that PNW kind of weather, but I guess it's never like the hot, hot PNW weather. So good. So good. Perfectly fresh. Before we leave Anchorage, we had to come back to our favorite coffee spot. We got some chai lattes, and on Saturday mornings, they make fresh homemade biscuits. So mm. good. How was your sleep? Um, my sleep was definitely off and on last night. When we were walking back to the van with Paco, we noticed a bunch of people with a ton of firewood. It looked like they were walking down to the beach area. And I was like, wow, you guys are gonna have a crazy bonfire, like enjoy. So at 2.30 in the morning, all of a sudden we hear people talking outside, breaking up pallets and stuff, and we're breaking up wood. Um, <clears throat> sure enough, it's some people that are going to be in that fire. They invited us down, I popped my head out because I heard like, oh, they're, they're out of towners, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, I'll give you 20 bucks or something. And I was like, what? So I popped my head out just to like make of sure. Of the hatch. Yeah, out of the hatch to make sure everything was all good and kosher. Right when I popped my head out of the hatch, the tone kind of changed and they quieted down. So after that point, I slept really good. I was like, I can't believe this mother truck is standing up out the hatch <laughs> with his sleep mask still on his head, <laughs> trying to be intimidating. Oh, I was definitely but a little. It worked. <laughs> well, what the thing was is I didn't have to be intimidating. I just had to show them that I was there and I could hear them and and like, you know, uh, make sure everything was good out there, like everything was okay. Cause I was like, I just heard a bunch of voices. I wanted to make sure everything was okay. And sure enough, since I was respectful, they were respectful to us and quieted down a lot after that. Oh yeah, I right, good. Next up, we're gonna head towards Girdwood. Our friends, Drifter Journey, are gonna try to surf the tidal wave today. So we're gonna try to catch that. And then we're gonna head to do laundry at our favorite laundry mat in Alaska. No, I'm just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kick. Here's the stitch. We got Drifter Journey in front of us. We're following them. Greg is gonna try to surf the, the tide wave. The one tide wave that comes in once every 24 hours here in Alaska, and we're gonna try to get some shots of it. So we're gonna follow them to the spot where he's gonna paddle out, and then hopefully he gets to ride the wave in, because that would be super epic. This is literally the only surfing in Alaska is the tidal wave. It's a big deal, and we're excited to watch some folks give it a try. Very dangerous though. Don't do it unless you're very experienced. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen some people in there already. I know. You think it's good to go? I hope so. You feeling good? Actually, I'm feeling pretty stiff today. Oh no! <laughs> uh, Greg okay. attempted this yesterday, but he was in the wrong spot. You shouldn't have So he missed the wave, so he's trying a second attempt. You shouldn't have took the Viagra, you wouldn't feel as stiff. <laughs> hey! I just saw one board. Okay. Yeah, just one. You gotta go further? No. Where's the wave coming in? It's coming right here. Right. Jess doesn't think that's where we were yesterday. I'm starting to see some ripples. There's someone paddling out over here. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna go up there. All right, you wanna get in the car? Move. All right, we're changing locations. Point break. We're fighting with the tide. Point we break. gotta hurry. Point break, it's time to go. It's time to go, hurry up. Jump in the van, the door's open, get in, get in. <laughs> One wave a day, you gotta chase it, you know? One wave a day, you gotta go. When the time is right, you gotta hit it. <laughs> There's only one way, one thing. Only one one life, one mic. Catching the wave. It's so hard because you only have one chance to get it. 
one chance every day to catch the tide and if you miss it that's it so this is their last chance they're also leaving Alaska soon so now or never baby So there's pull-offs all the way along this road. Oh, the way the waves look choppy, man. Let's yeah, see what bro. happens. Full stick. Full waves look choppy, man. All right, buddy, stay. You cannot uh, come until I'm danger. Let's see you butes in your suit. What? Beauts in your suit. Y'all are looking fabulous. Pretty much a Michelin tire man. <laughs> like everybody looks fucking cool when they're in them and they're about to go surfing. <laughs> I love you know it's like part of the yeah. it's part of the outfit, you know? Alright. Literally just dove into Arctic like, water. water. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, have fun. I'll be up here in my wool socks. Yeah. I'm not even you got the big guns out today, huh? Yeah. Figure we spent money on it. Might as well use it. There you go. Face drowning. Uh -huh. It took him all the way to that sandbar. Okay. And he just had to walk up this road back. You did so good. Yeah, I bet, babe. You need help? You got up. One shot of you. Yeah, Frank killed it on the drone. I kept trying to get like hard left away from that guy. I know. Because every time I went to pop up, I was burying the nose. I was like, I don't want to take him out. Yeah, man. It happened. I didn't kill it. <laughs> I'm tired. I bet. That was awesome. Had a lot of stuff. Yeah, oh, I yeah. Ian, so. yeah, yeah. Back in, yeah. And I pushed up to go and it buried the nose immediately. And I don't know if you can see, I like almost went out. You like flailed, I yeah. I seen it and yeah. caught it. I was like, I oh, he's going down, he's going down. Yeah, three, three times. And then right here at the end, I was like, oh, it feels like it's petering out. <laughs> then I thought maybe I had a chance and yeah. then I lost it and I was. I should have been taking it in, but... You did an awesome job, bro. Yeah. You killed it, honestly. <laughs> Success. Now you can leave Alaska knowing that you've Good done everything. Three, bro. <laughs> as soon as I pushed up, I was like, I'm going to regret this. <laughs> yeah, hey, buddy. Last time. Are you going to miss your friends? Yeah? Yeah. You going to miss your friends? Yeah. <laughs>
Bye, guys. Oh, Bye. guys. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you in the low Until 48. Yeah. yeah. Never goodbye. Yeah. So, We're an hour you. and a half away from the border, so I'm assuming. Oh. And that's how ba gone. Paco got taken. Yeah. Yeah. Had a really nice afternoon. We caught the surf wave for the second time. And which then was we, amazing. It's super cool. Uh, Matt got up on her surfboard, which was super sweet. And then we've just been talking with them for the last, like, four hours. And I made a boo-boo. A big boo-boo. A big boo-boo. I mean, it's a boo-boo. Huge. Boo -boo. Huge. All right, fine. It's pretty big, boo-boo. I left the battery to battery charger on. The whole and time. And so it drained our front battery completely. And, and we don't it, own jumper cables. No, we don't. So we got to get some jumper cables when we get down to the lower. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but it's kind of funny to me because, you know, this is part of the journey. We're also... Just a couple hours away from having to ship with tote. We have nothing packed. We did laundry today, and that's like it. Yep. Our YouTube video is not uploaded. It's uploading right now, we but it's taking forever. We do not. We are not in a good place right now. Alex is stressing out, and then all of a sudden, the van dies. <sighs> Bound for nowhere. We need you guys right now. We need you to come to our rescue. We need your juice. We need your juice to get our juice going. Easy. It's like a one second yeah, jump. Just need a little juice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, of course. You guys rock. And now I can let the alternator charge her battery. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, do you think that between now and camp is enough? Oh, yeah. Okay. She started up like a drain, which is great because that means the battery is not dead. We just drained it. Uh, we're going to head to the gas station. We're going to fuel up. Two gallons of gas is really all we need to get back to keep it out of the corner of a tank. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna shut her down at the gas station and see if it charged enough to keep us going. <laughs> is that how you feel right now? Yeah. Just show me how you really feel, babe. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is our last day with the van before it shifts with tote. We yeah. only have a... Did you hear what you just said? It's the last day. Can you believe that? No, I feel like this is our last, last day in day Alaska. Fuck. Ah, we've been so busy just Part like getting language. ready. Yeah, so we have to be at Tote by 2.30 this afternoon for your ride back. You have to schedule your drop-off time. So we are still in Girdwood. We took showers this morning at the laundromat, and now we're just getting the house ready, getting packed, emptying the garbage, emptying the gray tanks. Frank's going to disconnect the batteries. Actually disconnect the batteries this time because we forgot last time and it was a big mess. We got a bunch of stuff to do. Be sure to subscribe and tune in for next week because we're going to show you everything that you need to do to your van to get it ready to ship with Tote. And then we're moving into a car for a week and trying our hand at car camping. I feel like you want to subscribe just to see how weird that turns out. Until then, watch this up next video. We'll see you there.